so as we discussed in our last video, which you should probably watch if you haven't yet, Firebase Analytics is all about recording events that happen within your app and sending them down to the Firebase console so that you can start to get some information about them. And while seeing this data in aggregate is nice, sometimes you want to break this down into more specific user segments. I mean, sure, it's nice to see people are visiting your in-app store, but who are these people? Are they tablet owners, new users, Canadians? Knowing who these people are can make it easy for you to optimize your app to get better results. Now, by default, Firebase Analytics provides a number of segments for you for free. You can filter any particular event by device type or country, and if you have ad support enabled, things like gender and age as well. But very often, your app will have its own specific user properties that you'll also want to use to filter your data. An exercise app, for instance, might want to see how users with different fitness goals behave. Do your yoga enthusiasts subscribe to your newsletter more often than your runners, for example? That's something you can start to find out if you filter your data against custom user properties. So custom user properties are simply key value pairs that you set in the client. Every time Firebase Analytics sends down a batch of events to its servers, it also sends down any user properties that have been recorded for that particular user, both for that session and any time in the past. These things will persist for the lifetime of your app. Now, Firebase will take those events and make sure they get associated with all of your user properties so you can filter these events later on by those properties. Now, this has two implications for you as a developer. First, user properties are not retroactive. Once you've set a user property for a particular user, any and all future events will be associated with that property. But don't expect that their previous events will be magically updated. Those remain unchanged. Second, don't think you can like change a user property every 30 seconds and expect that every 30 seconds worth of data will be associated with that updated user property. A user property is something you should change more in the magnitude of like days or weeks. If you're trying to change it more frequently than that, you might want to look at other options instead like custom event parameters. Now, in general, the process for creating a new user property is pretty straightforward. On the client, you're going to set a key value pair representing the user property. And then in the Firebase console, you're going to add the user property to the list of all user properties it should filter your data by. And uh, that's about it. So with that in mind, let's set some user properties for real. Remember this app from the last video, the one where we're recording button presses and slider adjustments? Well, our marketing team has this theory that cat people are more likely to adjust the slider than dog people, but they want to back up that claim with data. So let's see how. First off, you can see that from my view did appear, I'm calling a method that asks my users if they're a dog or cat person. This should be pretty straightforward if you've ever used a UI alert controller. Next, we'll use that information to store a user property. In my cat person handler, I'm going to set a property by typing fur analytics dot set user property string cat person for name dog or cat person. Uh, note that you set the value first and then the key name. I always get that mixed up when I'm first setting these things. Oh, by the way, we have no official recommendation as to whether or not you go with camel case or underscores. Uh, just try and stay consistent or you'll drive yourself bonkers. Anyway, uh, I'll now do the same thing in my dog person handler method. For analytics, set user property string, dog person, and then we'll paste that in. Okay, my code set, uh, but I also have to make sure I register this user property on the Firebase console. Otherwise, I won't be able to use it. So we'll go to the Firebase console, select analytics for my project, and then click on user properties here. And I'll click create your first user property to create one. And uh, this is the one place you need to be extra super careful. You can use up to 25 custom user properties, but right now you can't delete or rename these things once you've entered them. So for starters, don't fill this up with like a lot of test cases or experimental user properties that, that you aren't going to need later. And for another, do make sure you get the name right and don't misspell it or anything. In fact, I like to copy and paste the proper name directly from my code just to make sure. And uh, that's what I'm doing here. OK, so I'm going to add a little description. And I'm going to double check to make sure this looks good, and it does. So we'll create it. Now I'll go back to my app and run it. I'll say that I'm a cat person. And you can see here in the Xcode console that it is now specified that my user property is now cat person. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the controls for a little bit. And OK, we'll go into the background. And you can see here in the Xcode console that it's sending down not only the events that it recorded, but also the dog or cat person user property that Firebase Analytics will associate with these events. Now, obviously, in a real app, I probably want to record this information once and not ask again. But for testing and demonstration purposes, it's kind of nice to get this dialog every time. So I'm going to build and run again. Uh, I'll say I'm a dog person this time around, perform a few other actions, and send down those events as well. Now I'm going to wait a few hours and check out my results in the Firebase console. 
Okay, so it's a day later, and let's take a look at these events. I'm here at the Firebase console, and I'll click on events, and then select my adjust slider event. I'll switch the drop down here to yesterday to just focus on yesterday's events, and here I can see the total events I have for yesterday. Then I'll click on add filter, user property, cat or dog person, and then I'll type cat person here. And, uh, well, huh, this is interesting. I have zero events. Somehow none of my events are being attributed to their user properties, which is kind of weird. So I asked around, and it seems like perhaps my simple test case wasn't quite enough to get Firebase Analytics to start using these user properties in its reports. There's like a minimum threshold I need to meet here that I haven't quite met yet. So I'm going to run this a few more times and submit some more events for both my dog and my cat people, and uh, that should hopefully fix things. Okay, so now I'm back at the Firebase console here, and we'll go and select events and adjust slider, and I'm just again going to focus on our events for yesterday. And now I'll filter this by user property, dog or cat person, and uh, oh, this is promising. You can see these values are now available in the drop-down list. So now I can filter this by cat person, and then compare these values here with what I get when I filter by dog person, which does look like much fewer. Uh, but be careful here. Don't get fooled by these absolute numbers. If I had like five times more dog people out there than cat people, I might see more total adjust slider events for my dog people. I really should be looking at these count per user stats to see which population actually prefers adjusting the slider more. But looking at what I do have here, it looks like our marketing folks were right. Cat people really do like adjusting sliders more than dog people. Maybe that little circle looks like a laser pointer to him or something. Anyway, I hope that gives you enough background to get started adding user properties to your own apps. Start thinking about what segments of your audience you're curious about, because that can start determining important factors like where you want to prioritize development or where you want to spend your marketing dollars. In the meantime, feel free to check out our documentation, subscribe to the Firebase channel, and I will see you soon on the next episode of Firecasts. The magical red dot, it's back! I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! Come back, come back, 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 back! Hey, come back! Back here!